Herzlich willkommen beim 36. Dokumentarfilmfestival hier in München. Mein Name ist Sebastian Sorg und ich bin sehr erfreut, heute das Publikumsgespräch mit Miriam Adou in Marokko führen zu dürfen. Sie hat ihren Film, die Weltpremiere von ihrem Film Suspended Wives in unserem Programm Doc Horizonte und ist damit natürlich auch für den Publikumspreis gestiftet vom Bayerischen Rundfunk und Reisert nominiert. Bitte ähm, gehen Sie auf unsere Webseite und informieren Sie sich darüber, wie Sie bis zum 21. Mai mit abstimmen können, denn dieser Preis ist neben den wichtigen, wichtigen Jurypreisen ein ganz besonderer Preis für die Filmemacher, denn nur er verrät, welcher Film im Herzen des Publikums wirklich angekommen ist. Darüber hinaus gibt es 2000 Euro, mit denen ein Dokumentarfilmemacher heutzutage sehr, sehr viel anstellen kann. Gut. So, welcome, Miriam Adou. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Miriam Adou. I'm a, a documentary filmmaker from Morocco. Hello, it's great to have you here with your film. So, oh, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, talking about your film, uh, which has such a strong um, filmic language, it's an observational documentary, mm -hmm. if I understand right. And yeah, absolutely. As every time when I have watched the film, I'm directly coming back to the beginning of uh, the film and I was so overwhelmed how strict and how clear you were telling your story about starting with uh, radio voices, talk, talking about actually divorce, which is mm -hmm. for us in Germany uh, uncommon because if you're divorcing, it's not a public issue. And, and then we are watching men sitting in cafes and women uh, working in uh, kitchens, directly in the first pictures. I was, I was actually very much intrigued by this very strict uh, language. Um, and then we are very fast, very close to three women. Can you tell us how did you uh, meet these women? How, um, how did you start to do that film with them? And maybe also, how did you yourself um, uh, decided to do a film on this issue? Because maybe it has a personal issue. I, I wondered if you yourself uh, had your name in that radio um, channel one day. So that's a uh, uh, the, the idea started uh, a couple of years ago. I have been made, because I'm, I'm myself, I have a degree in law. And uh, when I was a child, I was re 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 something that I hear every every afternoon in the radio. It was this radio announcement, and it was really funny for me. And uh, uh, later, I, I started law, and I started to understand what this announcement about. But the idea started really a, a couple of years when I have been doing a, 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 an institutional film with about uh, divorce in general in Morocco because the film is about a very specific procedure of divorce when the, the husband is absent. So I was filming in the tribunal and uh, I was talking uh, with people and with women because uh, uh, a couple of years ago we have a new family code in Morocco and everybody is talking about how easy divorce became in Morocco and so on. When we have been filming in the court, there have been women coming and talking to me and they told me it's with us that you need to, 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 to make a project because we have been running this procedure of divorce for many years and we couldn't uh, get our divorce. And at that time, it's when I started thinking about, uh, about this project. At that time, I was working in another film project, documentary film project. As soon as I finished, I started working in this, in this, in this project. How long, how long did you work with uh, this film? I started, the ideas I started researching from 2014. Now it's about 2014 uh, already, so seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. When the idea started, because it wasn't easy to 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 find the protagonist in the film. I was traveling around the country. I was uh, uh, because uh, the, the way I started looking for these women, I went to the court and I asked for name. Some 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 uh, presidents of the tribunal they helped. Some they didn't want to give me names. Some they told me. 
this kind of thing doesn't exist anymore uh, in Morocco because they, avoid, they want to avoid talking about it. But uh, uh, every uh, now, when I was a child, they broadcast this announcement in the afternoon. But now it's uh, at uh, 11 at night. Uh, whenever you, you you turn the radio, the national radio, you heard this name. So uh, uh, and then uh, I started filming with the, with some women, and uh, then I wasn't really clear about the story. It's when I heard that there is a region in Morocco that they have a very high rate of this uh, suspended women. It's the region of Benin Lel, uh, about 400 kilometers from the capital Rabat, and I traveled there. And the first day I went there, I went to the park, uh, this park uh, that is par uh, when I have been filming women talking about, it's where I meet with the women I have been filming with. I, I meet with the, uh, the, uh, Rita, uh, one of the pro protagonists, and then I meet with Latifa, and then Sadia, she called me and she wants to be part in the film. What so. was her motivation to be part of your film? Because this yeah. is a very personal mm -hmm. issue, it's already, I, I had the feeling watching the film that the families uh, are actually, like the children, actually uh, don't like to have this very public audience for the divorce of their parents. So how, what was the motivation of your protagonists to stay with you in the film? I, I think those women, they feel really, really, really lonely. So they need somebody, somebody to help them. And especially you say that in the film, all these all this protagonists, they have family and we rarely see them because they don't want to be filmed. And some of them, especially uh, uh, the protagonists who have, uh, who have uh, boy children, they don't want to be filmed and they don't like uh, the fact that their women, are, their, their uh, mothers are filmed. But I think uh, at a certain time they are fed up with this procedure and they want that their voice uh, be heard and they understood that the only way to make their voice heard is, is, uh, is to talk about it uh, pub publicly. Uh, so uh, uh, I, from the beginning, those, those three protagonists, as the first day I started filming with them, uh, I didn't find any problem with them. Uh, whenever there is something that will happen in the procedure and the judge asks them for something, they will call me as soon as they come out from the, the tribunal because the idea, I didn't want to film in the tribunal because if I have been filming in the tribunal, the situation will be much easy because the camera is there, so the judge will be very nice and the procedure will be much easier. So I avoided to film in the tribunal for me. Okay. The, the tribunal is not, up, is not there, the justice is up so it's from the beginning I, I, I got this uh, this idea and then whenever they come out from the tribunal they will call me and told me come there is something that happened they asked me to do that and they wait for me till I go and uh, and then they, we started uh, the doing things so I didn't find any problem with them and I didn't film only with these women I filmed with other women as well but uh, you know it's kind of a casting it's some people that you really get close to so those three women I was really Till now, till now, we are really, really, I, I still go there and I visit them and we change call all the time because we can, they, they become kind of my family and a lot of trust uh, have been uh, set up between us, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so without uh, spoiling any secrets of your film, of mm -hmm. your dramaturgy, how are they doing now, the three women? Uh, one, she got her divorce and she, one, she passed away. Uh, and uh, the third one, she still didn't get her divorce. But we are, we st we are still trying, you know, with the help of the, the, the lawyer, we are, we are trying to. Because I didn't want to leave, and, uh, because she has a lot of, lot of uh, hope that the film will help her in order to get her divorce. I still, we are still in the procedure of divorce, uh, with, but uh, we, we have been, we managed to get a lawyer so the, he can help her, and she cannot go into all this craziness uh, by herself. Mm. So, uh, and uh, you mentioned the situation on court and we also just see the court from outside. I wondered mm -hmm. if, uh, if there were any uh, like antagonists uh, in, during the filming that we don't see in the film now, like uh, the families of the men who are mentioned or uh, maybe also judges or um, any legislative 
people, I, did they support or more or less try to push you out of the procedures? Uh, 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 many people, they wanted me to, start, to, to not do those films starting because at the beginning when I started doing the research, I went to many uh, women organizations, to the court and so on and so on. So, and so many people told me this story doesn't exist anymore. It's just in my dreams. It's something very old in the past. But, uh, and they tried to make me change and talk about other things. So from the beginning, they, they didn't want me to do that. But... Uh, as soon as I started doing the film, I was really stuck on my uh, on the protagonist. So, the problem that we, are, we 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 have been facing is the problem that we have been facing in the film. You know, the, mm. the, the, that they are really ha are have been facing in the film. Uh, a part of that, uh, no, because I was really really with the, with with the protagonist. So I tried to to get what was happening. Uh, and the problem they, are, they have been facing is the problem they have been facing really in the film. Rather than that, uh, I don't think so, no. What? Uh, just the speaking to a German audience who maybe sometimes does not really understand, like, why, why does a man... Uh, th there is this wonderful situation, a scene in your film when men during a celebration are talking to each other about how many women they could... Uh, <laughs> marry uh, me as a German man I uh, would never try to marry more than one wife of course uh, what is the motivation of men marrying um, several women and abandoning their families and of course what's the uh, why why do women have to be divorced I mean because there are clear reasons I am a woman myself I cannot answer that so okay. I'm a woman myself it's why I was For me, I, I heard many times in my life, I heard men making fun about women and marriage and so on. For me, it's a very absurd situation. And because of that, it's in my film. I myself, I don't understand why the situation is like that. So I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. But it's, it's a high amount of people, uh, like suspended wives. First, I thought it's just, it's, it's a title of an artistic piece. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. suspended wives is a standing group is a, is a group of um, female persons in Morocco who mm -hmm. are abandoned. Yeah, it's, the, it's typically, we call them in Arabic, it's smalqat, and uh, uh, the word means suspended. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's the word we call these women that left behind by their husband. Mm -hmm. And even in the religion, it's in the Quran, uh, call, in the Quran it says, don't, uh, don't leave the woman suspended. It's mm -hmm. how they got this name. So if you want to divorce, a if you don't want to live with the woman, don't leave her suspended. It's the mm -hmm. term that we get from the Quran, the religion. And it's now in Morocco, we call this kind of women who are abandoned by their husbands suspended because and suspended means in the tradition in Morocco, she's not either married or divorced. She's between, you know, she's mm -hmm. she don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, no. So they don't have really legal rights from which they could profit in their situation because they are yeah. basically yeah. poor uh, females, uh, women, and um, but uh, they have no, there's no profit for them staying abandoned and suspended, <laughs> if I understand <laughs> right. Yeah, it did, the, uh, this situation creates many, 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 many problems uh, in life yes. because, for example, if a woman has children, for example, and she want to her children in the school. They are studying in a, in a school and she wants to change them from one school to another. She needs that the father sign a paper in order that she move them for, to another school. And the problem is she, she doesn't have, except she, if she have a divorce certificate and she's divorced and she look after her children, she can move them from, to another school. But in her situation, she's not divorced. She cannot move her children to another mm. school because the father is not there and, and, and her situation is not clear. She's, she will tell them, I don't have a husband. She will still prove that you don't have a husband. She, she has no mm. proof. And uh, also for the... Social security, she need, she need to have a clear situation. Either she's married or divorced because her husband needs to sign some people and the husband is not there. So this situation creates many other, other, other problems around because she, have, she doesn't have a, a, a very clear family statute. So she's neither divorced or, or married. 
So would you say that it's basically a problem for poor um, women in Morocco or is it also a problem for, because uh, you, you have chosen now three more or less poor, hard-working women. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very impressive how they make their life, how, how they are facing all those uh, troubles. Also during the procedure, finding 12 mm -hmm. witnesses. Um, which is bizarre, and um, but would it also be, because if I imagined, if this kind of law would be realized in Germany, uh, and um, very prominent people like uh, a prominent actress or somebody would suddenly uh, be on the radio, oh, she's going to be divorced. <laughs> of course, we, we read that in the newspaper, but it's mm -hmm. not like uh, every day in the radio. Uh, Is there a difference between the, the poor women in Morocco and the richer ones? Or is it, would you say, no, it's just like poor working women? It's, it's the same, except that for uh, rich women, she will pay a lawyer. And in this case of this procedure, it's very, very, uh, it's very, it's not, uh, she can, if a poor woman, she cannot pay for that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of expensive. So a rich woman, she will go to a lawyer and she will stay in her house. And the, the lawyer, she will try to find all the ways to, to get her out from that. But a poor woman, she cannot offer to pay a lawyer. That's so, why, that's why I, I, I went to, I, I filmed with this woman because they cannot pay a lawyer. So. So it would be easier if you have more money and more uh, money, yeah. and uh, the more cooperative your ex-husband is, then the easier it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the majority of these women, if your husband, for example, is a civil servant, so it's easy to find him. But if he's not a civil servant, it's really complicated because he, he disappeared in nature and you don't know where he is. You cannot find him. A civil servant, you know that he's working in, in this office. So it's easy to find him. She will not have that complicated problem. Uh, middle class, she's married to someone who is really knowing and so on. So um, the German, uh, I, was, I had to read it again because I, uh, for myself, I'm not um, thinking about divorce at the moment. So. Um, Normally, uh, you wonder in these times how you get married, how you can prove that you are married for mm -hmm. citizenship reasons. But if I am right, in Germany, there are four cases. Uh, um, if you are divorced or if you are trying to get divorced, normally you're just waiting for one year. Uh, and if both are agreeing, you are divorced. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are alone after three years, uh, you are already divorced. It, you mm -hmm. always need a judge, but you are divorced. Why is it? Uh, why why is it so different in Morocco? Why why is the system or the, why are the laws different? What what is the reason for that? I mean, we, first, we have to. I have to clarify something. We are talking about the divorce when the absent the husband is absent. Because mm -hmm. if the the absent, uh, the husband is there, uh, the, the the divorce is much easier, and you don't go to, through this 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 kind of procedure yes, yes. because in this case you have to prove that the, the the husband is absent. When you talk to 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 lawyers or people from law and so on, they will tell you when you ask them why the situation is very complicated. They say uh, because um, the law protects uh, the two parties, so she prote the law protects the the, the 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 woman and the man, and we don't know if the the man is looking for divorce. It's why the the. The law say that the woman she has to to really prove that the husband the, the husband is really absent in order that the judge pronounce the divorce because he wants to protect the rights of the two parties. It's how mm -hmm. how they, they explain that. So, do you think this has to change in Morocco, or do you think it's a good system? <laughs> of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course, it has to change. Of course, mm. it's not. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a good system at, mm. at all. Because uh, I just find it a very uh, absurd. How can you don't know where someone is uh, in mm. the 21 century when everything is? Uh, you have just to to type the number of the security number or the identity card that you find someone and you told somebody we don't know where he is. For me, it's a it's a it's a crazy thing because why have to we why we have to look for this man? They are there. They are they, they are there. You can find them whenever you want. Because if somebody make a crime, they find them easily. But if he abandoned his wife, it took, they will never find him. So if she get divorced before they find him, they will never appear. 
for me it's uh, it's, it's crazy did you have did you get in contact of uh, to one of those uh, uh, ex-husbands or husband mm, no 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 and you also don't know what they would think about it mm, no, no now that they are in the film i don't know even the, if they know i don't know they know that they are in the film now yes <laughs> they would find out about it later <laughs> 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 so uh, you you really managed it to do a very uh, I would say in a filmic way and and also from the whole message and from your mission a, a film which is really impressive to me and I'm very really happy that we can watch watch it here it brings me to a place and to a world that I didn't know I was really me and my wife were uh, really impressed um, how could you realize this film over such a long period of time, who was supporting you? Because, I mean, I know and we all know that you're not making a living by making this film. Mm -hmm. How could you do that? Uh, you know, we are documentary film filmmakers who are a bit crazy, you know. <laughs> kind of. I started doing my, the film at the beginning, at the beginning by myself. Uh, with, nobody supported me at all. And then slowly by slowly, I went to, you know, uh, to workshop, to some workshop. And then I, I, I managed to, read, uh, to, to raise some money and then... Uh, I then I managed to make the film, but I didn't live with the film. I have never paid with that film. All the money I get, it's not a huge money. I didn't get that much money for the film. It went uh, in the film, but uh, I do work uh, between, you know, I work uh, for documentary, for TV and so on. It's how I make my living. And uh, between times I, I, I have been made in this film. So you basically also did the shooting and the sound and the editing by mm, yourself? No. I didn't do the shooting. I, I, I somebody would uh, at the begin at the beginning. I started by myself, and then uh, some um, a friend of mine. He 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 joined, and he did because we work in other projects. He say it's it's fine. We can do the film even if there is no money and so on. So many people they have been later involved in the film even. They haven't been no, no money because they, they thought uh -huh. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really wait the story will to be told so uh, and then slowly by slowly we get some money and and then we managed to make the film but I did lots of work myself yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's really impressive a very last question. Um, when did you already show the film to your protagonists and do you think you can, because this is not the world premiere of your film, uh, do you think it is possible to show the film in Morocco and what, what will it affect, do you hope that it will affect something? Uh, I did, the, the protagonist didn't show the film yet, but uh, uh, we have been really lucky because we have the Moroccan second channel as a co-producer uh, in the film, and I was really happy that the film will be showing in Morocco. Yeah, it will be showing in the Moroccan uh, uh, second channel, Duzem. It's one of the the channel that uh, have a huge uh, audience, and for me, it's something really, really important. Wonderful. That's good to know. Thank you very much for very your kind. presence, uh, for Thank our talk. You. And um, we are crossing fingers for your protagonists and for everything which your film will hopefully evoke. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.